Hi guys, Mr. Off Waffles here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Keeper language and getting familiar with the basics so that you can look at a symbol and say, yep, I know how to translate that. Before we start, I just want to say that compared to Apothicon, Keeper is really rather complicated for the following reason. In Apothicon, you're pretty much only relying on the fact that radicals, that's these small individual words with fairly simple meanings, can be glued together to form bigger compound words which have more complicated meanings. That's pretty much the way the entire language works and there isn't really a massive amount more than that that you need to worry about. There's not any punctuation, no real strange grammatical phrasing of things, it's fairly straightforward. Keeper on the other hand has plenty of grammar, plenty of punctuation, plenty of weirdness with its symbols themselves, but thankfully, in this video, what I've managed to do is distill all of that into a form that is just the most important information for you to consume so that you can understand the language, and then in future videos, we'll be doing more complex stuff with grammar and punctuation and all of that, and that way, if you really want to understand the language's nuances, you can go ahead and do so. But for now, it's the basics. The thing that I think sets Keeper apart from things like English or Apothicon or what have you is that Keeper is based on a numbers system rather than using a standard alphabet. So in English, we have A, B, C, D, etc. That's the Latin alphabet or the Roman alphabet, right? That's what we use and that's fine. Apothicon has its series of radicals, so that's what it uses, but Keeper mostly uses numbers from 0 to 8. Now, that might sound a little weird to you. Why aren't they using 9 and what's the deal with using numbers for an alphabet? How does that work? Let me explain. Let's think about the way we count. If you've got a box of melons in front of you and you want to count how many melons are in the box, turns out there are 10 melons, but that's a spoiler, you might go, okay, I'm going to count the melons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Sorted. Very easy to count on your fingers, and 10 is a nice round number like I've said. But for a keeper, it's a little different, because keepers have three fingers, or rather, three fingers. It's sort of like this. And so what they would have to do is count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's no longer this round number that it seems like it is for us. Because it's so easy for us to count to 10, we use that system as the basis for pretty much any maths that we might be doing in the real world. If we're doing something with accounting or finance or doing some maths in school even as well, 90% of the time or more, you're using what is called base 10. And that's motivated by this ease of counting to 10. However, keepers don't find 10 to be such a clean number. Remember what I said? They'd be left on this one outstretched thumb if they were counting to 10, and that doesn't feel very good. They'd much rather count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and stop there. That feels like a really nice clean number for a keeper. So what they do is instead of using this base 10 that we use mostly, they use base 9. So like I said, I'm not going to go into the specifics of what base 9 entails right now, but what I will say is that it's because of that, because keepers use base 9, that there isn't a number 9 in their language. So when you're looking at these symbols, you'll see they go from 0 to 8, and then they stop. And then what keepers can do is they can go uh, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, etc, but they won't have a number 9, and they won't have a 19, and they won't have a 29, or a 39, etc. So you're probably wondering at this point why I've gone on about this for so long. Why is this important, this fact that keepers have three fingers? Who cares, right? Well, you need to care, because keeper words are actually just numbers. They're numbers written out with the series of symbols that I'm going to have on this wall here displayed for you to have a look at, and pretty much all keeper words use those symbols. I think the easiest way for you to understand how this process works is for me to do an example now and you can follow along and then I'll set you some homework if you like so you can make sure you understand and I'll give you the answers in the description. So to make a translation, we look at a word. So you've got a keeper word written on a wall or whatever. We'll be using the one above the keeper's body in this image that's just over here. And you say, okay, first things first, I need to write down what the word is in numbers, okay? So like I said at the beginning of the video, Keeper uses numbers 0 to 8, and we have all of the symbols for those, and so we look at those symbols and we write out which symbols are present 
in the word itself. Then you're gonna have to pause for a moment and say, okay, in this case, for example, this example image that I've got in the side of the video here, you can see that it looks like it should be read 2,542. But that's not actually the case because keeper words, just the words themselves, are actually read right to left. So in this particular case, the number we're looking at is 2452, 2,452. It's not 2,542, it's 2,452. It's the other way around, okay? Right to left. So you've got the number written out, you know that it's in base nine because this is a keeper word, it's keeper that's been written down, and so they're gonna write in base nine because it's the number system they use, and so you need to convert that now to base 10, because that's what we use, right? To do that, all you need to do is get the number that you've read right to left, and you need to convert that using the converter in the description, okay? Like I said, separate video coming out very soon on what exactly that conversion entails, but for now, just let the computer do it for you, it's much easier, and if you do that, you'll get an output number, you'll get some number in base 10 that should be slightly smaller than the original one you had in base 9. So, for example, with this number that we've got from the image here, we have 2452, and if we convert that to base 10, we end up with 1829. So, you've got your number now in base 10, what the hell do you actually do with the damn thing to get a meaning out of it? Well, in the description, like I said, there's this big grid you can go to and you can find the meaning of certain words because some words, like 1829 for example, just have a meaning straight up. They are given to us on the Holy Grail, the shirt that Jason Blundell gifted to me as a personal thank you for appearing on the Zetsubo no Shima DLC2 launch stream with him. So we would look at that grid and say, okay, 1829, that is paired to the meaning of seal up or seal away. And then we'd say, okay, cool, we've got our first translation sorted. And that's just something that is written down for us to observe and say, Grail. So to quickly summarize that process, you'll start out with a word written in keeper symbols. You need to write down which symbols are present. So for example, you might have 001. That might be the word that you are seeing made up out of those numbers. And then you need to read it right to left. So 001 would be 100. You then need to convert that number from base 9 to base 10. So 100 in base 9 converted to base 10 should be 81. And then you need to look at the meanings that we have and say, okay, 81, and again, in the description, there's links to all of this stuff, 81 gives you keeper. And so we know that keeper, 81, is the symbol that you're seeing on the wall there written in the keeper language. Let's do another quick example just to make sure you've understood, okay? Let's look at the other set of symbols that are on that same image that we were originally looking at. They are at the bottom of the image instead of being above the keeper this time. And the numbers that we can see there look like this, and that means that the number that we're reading in base 9 is 115, okay? That's an interesting number. I think I've heard of that one before. But what we're going to do is we're going to convert base 9 to base 10. So 115 is going to be 95, okay, in base 10, that is. And 95, when you look it up in that grid, gives us the meaning of cross, move beyond, and venture. So that is exactly how you do these translations, guys. I'm going to pop an image on the screen just up here now, and that's going to be a mystery word that I'm not going to translate in this video. Instead, I'm going to put the translation in the description, and then you guys can try and translate it, and if you succeed, then congratulations, you've done a fantastic job and learned some really interesting stuff in a very short space of time, so really good job. If you struggle, I'm sure there'll be plenty of people, myself included, in the comments section willing to help you guys out. So, thanks for watching guys, this has been your very basic introduction to translating words in Keeper. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, I've put so much time into this and translated all of the dialogue on Shadows and Dereisendrache in Keeper and Apothecon. I've done all of the textures, I've done absolutely everything I possibly could, now that I'm finally allowed to give you guys this info, so... I mean, holy moly, it's been fun. Just before I go, I want to give you one last bit of advice for translating Keeper or Apothecon, okay? And this is going to save you so much time, I'm so happy to be able to tell you guys about it, okay? I've built a website that does all of this for you, okay? So you don't need to worry about thinking about base 9, base 10, converting, doing this, that, and the other. All you've got to do is see a symbol on the wall, okay, and click those symbols 
into the keypad that has the keeper symbols on it. So you literally just click what you can see in the word itself, and then it will automatically do the entire conversion process and just out will plop your keeper word. I'm really happy to be able to share it with you guys. I've put so much time into that alongside all of the translations I've also done as well, and also all the Apothecon stuff and just, Oh my goodness, I'm very, very excited about it. So there's a link in the description down below. It's the same website as the conversion thing that I was showing you before converting from base nine to base 10. It's on that very same website. I'll have a little demo of it on screen now so you can get an idea of just about how it works. Basically just typing in a word, Bob's your uncle, out pops the translation and oh my goodness, I'm really, really hoping that the community finds this thing useful because I think that it's such a good tool for translating stuff just straight away. If you need something translated, boom, it's done. Hopefully you like it. Let me know if there's anything you want me to add to that website or just anything at all in the comments down below. I've got big plans for it and I can't wait to expand on it in the very near future. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.